three speakers. I'm very happy to have you and learn more about the Edulab. Uh, if there are any questions, you can just uh, put them in chat. Okay, so I will start. So welcome for this presentation where we are together with my colleagues from TUK. We have the pleasure to explain you what we have done in a, a recently completed research project uh, uh, carried out in the frame of the Interreg uh, Greater Region Program. So this project has uh, evolved along, along the time and has reached uh, a target that we maybe we were not expecting at the beginning when starting the project. So this target is an experimental remote teaching tool that we are going to explain based on the, this network of laboratories that were connected uh, during the project. So I may go to the next slide. But as I said, this presentation will be given by three persons. I will start presenting the project and the, the overall context. Then uh, Katarina Budia from TUK will explain the use of this platform as a remote uh, teaching uh, a tool. And uh, Professor Sabino Pham from TUK as well will explain you the, the new opportunities and the possible applications that are offered by this uh, uh, learning tool. So myself, I'm from the University of Liège and the Arlon campus in, in the south of Belgium. This will be shown, I think, on the, on the future slide. So the outline of the presentation, three parts, as I mentioned. First, the presentation of the project, the context and the technical data exchange platform that was developed in the course of the project. Then second part, uh, Katerina Bodhi explained the, the teaching uh, uh, opportunities offered by the platform that we have opportunity that we have experienced during a prototype uh, a course that we have developed together and offered to students in the May in like last May and that we we're going to reproduce in the end of the year and finally Professor Hoffman will give the conclusions and the outlook and the potential use of this platform for other teaching and uh, opportunities. Just a short technical note, Mr. Andre. Uh, could you please try and remove your mic a little bit from from the mouth? Because it's cracking. Okay. Sorry. Not too, not that much. Just just enough that we can hear you, and it's, it doesn't have the feedback loop. Okay, like this. It's okay. yeah. It's perfect. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Sorry. So. Uh, the project is called LCCKN. LCC is in French, meaning Réseau de Chambre Climatique. I will explain why. And uh, KN is simply the German translation, uh, Climate uh, Home Netzwerk. Klima Labor Netzwerk. Klima Labor Netzwerk, sorry. <laughs> okay, so this, maybe the next slide. So this, this platform is a, a connection of uh, at the beginning of the project, four labs and the, the fifth uh, joined the process in the course of the project. So these labs are located in different countries and uh, in the greater region. We have one in Belgium, two in Germany, one in France, and the one we, jo we joined the project later uh, is located in Luxembourg. So we have here the map showing the different locations. We has only shown to, to, to identify my uh, native university location, but we are uh, working on the Arlo campus, which is in the greater regions, close to the Luxembourg as well as to the French border and not so far from Germany. So in each of these uh, locations, uh, there, there are existing labs. Uh, they are named on this slide. We have my own lab, BAMS is the acronym of my research team, Building Energy Monitoring and Simulation. Then we have the LEMAP uh, lab in Nancy, University of Lorraine. In uh, Kaiserslautern, we have a living lab, but uh, we will show in the next slides pictures of these different labs. There is a battery laboratory in Saarbrücken, and finally, uh, a new lab joined the project based in Luxembourg in the Department of en en Environment and Energy. So a few slides showing the uh, capabilities of the different labs. 
So uh, the lab located in in my university in Arlon is a building. Uh, a part of, of it is uh, occupied by a so-called climate chamber. You have here a picture of this chamber where we can um, create loads for uh, uh, heating or cooling systems. We can also measure uh, thermal comfort by different instruments that you can show on the on the picture, measuring temperature, humidity, air flows. Uh, we can create a virtual occupancy uh, just to uh, submit different uh, systems or uh, heating and cooling control systems to identical conditions. So this is the first the first lab. Then. Next slide shows the technical installations that is uh, in place in the Lerma lab in, in Nancy. We have on the screen uh, CHP, uh, so so-called cogeneration engine. Uh, that's the blue box that you see on the center of the of the image of the picture. Uh, then we have an, also a solar absorption machine, water tanks on the left side, the red bottle, big tanks. Uh, stores hot water and different technical devices. So this um, is a, a comprehensive uh, uh, heating vent uh, and cooling uh, system uh, that can be used for different purposes. Then we move to Kaiserslautern, the so-called living lab, where you see here an outside view of this this. Uh, a set of rooms that are occupied by the researchers of the TUK, where they can um, interact with the indoor climate. They can uh, give appreciations or give impressions on this indoor climate that can be submitted to different loads, uh, mainly in connection with the, the natural light that can be changed according uh, using different uh, solar protections. So the main, most important point is that this, this lab is occupied by uh, real people that are living there, that are working there, and then, can, then can, that can, who can uh, interact with the climate and also give a, um, a subjective impression of the climate they feel. Then we move to uh, Zabrücken, where we have a, a lab dedicated to a, a very specific uh, domain, which is the analysis at testing of uh, batteries, electrical batteries that can be connected to, for instance, solar systems. So they have developed uh, uh, important expertise in, in the field of batteries, and um, they are able to analyze the behavior of different types of electrical batteries. And then we finished the tour of the labs in Luxembourg, where we have a uh, also quite a comprehensive technical installation, uh, including different uh, systems and devices, uh, solar systems, uh, heat pumps, and cogeneration machine. Um, main, this is quite the same as the, the technical installations we have in also in, in Nancy. Okay. Thank you very much, Philippe. Okay, so I give the floor to Katerina for the explanation of the digital Thank course. You, so, uh, one, as we already told you, one possible application of the RCCKN platform is to use it as a base for um, distance learning. And we um, uh, um, we planned a whole um, uh, lecture series with the name EduLab. And now I will show you the structure of two pilot courses, which we also evaluate with the students. The aim of the course is to improve the understanding of students regarding the operation of heating and cooling systems. And for this, we consider various heating and cooling systems, but also occupants comfort conditions, which will change with uh, different heating and cooling systems and which have a high impact on the um, energy load also. Uh, we will show the performance of different heating and cooling systems. We are online monitoring and remote control. And this is a, a important point that we can uh, use the uh, heating and cooling systems of different universities, which are not available on site. And um, another important point 
for us was to consider uh, the students' interactions for a successful learning process so that they understand the whole construct between the heating and cooling systems, the influence on thermal comfort, but also um, on the energy demand of a building. And we want to show a new approach for distance learning in the field of energy management and energy performance of buildings. So now I will show you the structure of the two pilot course, which we um, did in May this year. Um, we had uh, different participants. So we have selected students of the five university from each university. Um, there were four to five students uh, um, participating. And we had five lectures from Alon and Kaiserslautern. And similar to, uh, to, uh, to Today, we uh, changed um, the lecturers uh, based on their knowledge field and um, explained different things. Uh, the main topics of the two pilot course were surface cooling and thermal comfort. For the first course and the second course had uh, um, AC, so air, air conditioning systems, and another focus were on, on the influence of solar radiation and we evaluate these uh, two courses together with the students. For the lectures, we have different elements. Um, so we have this collaborative parts, which we share, we share the lectures together with the students, like an introduction with an icebreaker session or the collaborative conclusion part. And then we have a lot of students' interaction parts, like surveys, measurements, discussion boards, and calculation with live data, which we gather from the um, RCCKN platform. <clears throat> Here, uh, this um, shows the visualization with the Grafana tool. So we can get uh, live data, or we can gather visually the live data of the platform RCCKN. Uh, we were using this directly in the lecture for the calculations. And uh, for sure, we have new input um, uh, parts. These are the lecture parts. Um, in the pilot course, there were, for example, comfort value, which is called uh, PMB, and different cooling systems, solar load, and so on. Here, we'll, uh, here I will show you the structure of the first uh, pilot course, uh, starting from here and ending here. Um, here we have this introduction and icebreaker part. And what we did, we mixed uh, all the international students in smaller groups. And um, to get this uh, mixed groups, uh, they introduced themselves. And to start a discussion, we gave them a simple question uh, that they can discuss. After that, they came together in the uh, bigger group again, and we had an open discussion. In the first course, what we did, uh, we heat up the living lab smart office space in Kaiserslautern and we emulate the, these temperatures in the climate chamber in Alon. And um, so uh, because of this, we did a comfort survey and we want to know their thermal sensation and comfort state. Um, and we sent a comfort survey to all the students and we uh, could directly see the results and discuss the results and ask them what they want to change. And for sure, they want to use a cooling systems and a cooling system. So we start to use uh, this cooling system, what we introduce them later on uh, in the course. After using the cooling system, we had a second uh, comfort survey here and we discussed about the comfort values and so on. In between, we could see the results of the um, cooling system, for, for example, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, flow of the cooling system and the uh, um, uh, temperatures of the different rooms uh, for the climate chamber and the living lab, uh, and use this live data later on in the calculation of the energy demand. In the second, who has, uh, we had the uh, same um, uh, similar um, components like this uh, students' interaction parts, but here we had a focus on the influence of uh, solar load and uh, we introduced new cooling systems, um, but the structure was more or less the same. So they had a lot of measurements, calculations, 
discussion boards and uh, calculation for the energy demand with the live data. So as we are, we are planning a whole a course series, we will introduce them uh, further heating and cooling systems uh, and also decentralized heating and cooling systems, for example, an office chair with heating and cooling function and a thermoelectric cooling partition, as these systems have a high influence on thermal comfort and they can uh, improve the uh, and or they uh, can reduce the energy demand in buildings. Uh, furthermore, we will uh, work together with the uh, University of Saarbrücken, uh, HTV Saarbrücken, and um, use the battery storage together with the PV systems, a PV system, and we will show them further topics like visual comfort, daylight, and human circadian rhythm. Now I will give uh, the word to <laughs> Professor Hoffmann. Thank you very much, Katharina. And I'm trying to show you some examples of the interactive parts uh, to make it a little bit more imaginable what we did. So uh, Katarina told you about the thermal comfort survey. So uh, maybe some of you are not so familiar with thermal comfort as a term by itself and uh, what it means uh, running a thermal comfort survey. So on the left hand side, you see a picture from a living lab where you can see that we do have tablets in all our workplaces and uh, people can vote or they can rate their thermal sensation in terms of being warm or cold and thermal comfort in uh, terms of being comfortable or uncomfortable. So that's something that we sent uh, the, the students in the living lab. They could use the tablets, but we also send out online uh, surveys to the other students, which of course had different thermal conditions, hence they uh, voted their thermal sensation, thermal comfort differently. But we could also show uh, that even uh, under the very same conditions, like in the living lab where we heated it up to, I think, 27 degrees C, uh, there were very uh, different perceptions of the thermal environment. Um, at the same time, and we use that uh, for our lecture series as well, we measure uh, different parameters in the space. We sent out one of these sensor stations also to Arlon, so they could do their own measurements. We measure air temperature, relative humidity, um, air velocity, and mean radiant temperature, and we calculate a comfort metric, which can then be compared with the rated um, thermal sensation. Furthermore, we have uh, some actuators in the living lab that we used during these uh, uh, courses. Uh, on the left, upper left-hand side here, you see an electrochromic glazing system. You see that it can be tinted in different zones. So here, the reason was to avoid uh, glare conditions. So you see, I'm try, oops, sorry, I'm trying to start that again, just so you can see it. So the middle zone is tinted when the sun is behind the middle zone, and then the upper zone is tinted. Um, at other uh, areas of the facade, we have an automated uh, Venetian blind system, which we can actuate manually or, of course, also automated. But in the lectures, we let uh, students use uh, the... Uh, manual operation mode so that they could uh, adjust their uh, preferred situation. And then on the lower left hand side, um, that's an, uh, like a placeholder picture for our work on uh, lighting, on light fixtures as actuators. Here you can see different uh, color temperatures. So this is a very um, cold light with a high color temperature, very warm light with a low color temperature. Um, you may be familiar with this uh, contradiction. And lighting is also uh, one topic where uh, we use uh, the lecture to make um, very theoretical um, performance metrics um, more um, uh, ex or make them experience, make the students experience uh, the conditions that some theoretical values described. So with such a spectrometer, we can measure 
the lighting conditions in the space, even with the full spectrum. And what we did in the uh, uh, courses, we um, asked the students first how they uh, would perceive the current conditions. And we would go and measure the lighting conditions. And the students, they measured them uh, self. Then we adjusted the artificial light to a level where we could uh, reach an illuminance of 500 lux. 500 lux is uh, like the target value in workspaces. And we measured the electric power that was needed to maintain these 500 lux as a workplace. After that, we asked the students to adjust the lighting condition, so the light intensity to a level where they are comfortable with. And sometimes that's above the 500 lux, but more often it's below the 500 lux. And again, we measured uh, the illuminance that they've chosen and the electric power. Um, so of course, we can do this only in the lab that has these measurement uh, tools that provides a spectrometer. Uh, but uh, we did it in a way that the other students that were at the other locations could follow the students, running the measurements, uh, talking about their experiences. So it was like the peers, so the other students uh, did the measurements uh, and uh, they could participate in the experiments through their peers. We also um, explained, you saw these, these little uh, bold uh, red uh, circles, um, which, are, which were lecture parts in the course. Uh, so of course we gave uh, some kind of lectures to explain certain things uh, in general, but also more specific. Uh, we kept the lectures to about 10 minutes uh, to maintain this very interactive uh, character of the lecture. So, uh, here we explained uh, the sch uh, schematic of the cooling system that we use in the climatic chamber in Arlon. Here we have a heat pump that heats up uh, water, a water tank. Then we have uh, our ventilation with fresh air going through a heat exchanger uh, for to the inlet to the climatic chamber where we measure temperature uh, and humidity. We have the exhaust air that goes away. And then uh, we use the uh, RCCKN platform and a visualiz visualization tool called Grafana to show exactly uh, the temperatures that at this uh, moment, but also uh, in the time before we were looking at, so into the history um, of the temperatures and other physical variables of the experiment. So remember, Katarina said in the beginning, we heated up the living lab in Kaiserslautern and we reproduced the same conditions in the climatic chamber in Aron. Then we started our cooling system, which you could see in the schematic before. We cooled down the room and then we could see uh, together with the students, with all students on the visualization platform, how the temperatures evolve, but also how the energy uh, or some energy relevant uh, variables evolved. Um, at the end, uh, the students did calculations. They can from, from the ACCKN platform, they can download uh, the measured data and then they can do an energy, a calculation of the energy consumption to get a feeling uh, of how much energy was needed to cool the space down. Um, as Katarina said, we did a um, joint evaluation with together with the students. And uh, here um, we are going to show some of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats known as SWOT analysis. And from what we got from the students, uh, they really, really liked the high degree of interaction, uh, the practical relevance, since we're using real uh, devices and equipment, which is used in, you know, in, uh, in buildings. Um, um, so it has a lot of practical relevance. Uh, since we ran the experiments over a longer time, uh, interrupted by these interactive uh, parts and the lectures, we could see the dynamic behavior of a system, not only something that you can show 
at a specific given point in time, we could see the, the evolution over altogether three hours. So we could see the dynamic behavior, transient behavior of the systems. And we could see how a system reacted to current uh, conditions. Uh, the weaknesses is, um, and it's not quite a weakness, but it's uh, something that, of course, one has to know when preparing such courses. Uh, the time required to prepare this kind of courses is, um, it requires more time than a regular lecture where you just show slides and explain things. And, of course, experiments uh, are always prone to errors and uh, disturbances. At almost every experiment, something goes wrong at some point. Uh, sometimes everything goes, goes right, but often something, something goes wrong. And that's also a little bit what we call a threat in the, this format, that it requires a, a high flexibility from the lecture. So if some experiment goes wrong, you need to have some kind of plan B, or you have to explain what went wrong, you have to find out what went wrong, you have to explain what went wrong, and um, find a solution to make the whole experiment um, work. And the opportunities, um, uh, there are quite a number of them. Uh, for the students, of course, was first, they could uh, experience or get experiences with systems uh, that uh, we, for example, at TUK uh, don't have on site. Uh, they learned new terms like thermal comfort that's applied to the students uh, from, for example, Alain and uh, Nancy. Um, they could participate in some experiments through their peers, uh, as uh, shown with the uh, example of measurement illuminance. Um, they could uh, be in contact with students from other disciplines. So we had architecture students, facility management students, civil engineering students, energy system students. So there were different disciplines. And of course, there were different countries and different languages. So uh, we could really see that it encouraged the students to speak English in the beginning. They were a bit shy, but through this the big number of um, interactive sessions, they really started talking to each other. And they could uh, participate on site, and uh, also some of the students participated from home. And of course, that we didn't mention it explicitly, but this was a little bit the driver uh, for um, for for um, this development. We had a corona situation. It was very difficult to run lab experiments um, on site. So that was one uh, possibility to uh, provide students with lab experiments, uh, even um, if they uh, couldn't come to the university. So at least we could do this with some um, a, a low number of students uh, on site and others could participate uh, from home. So uh, short conclusion, um, the students really liked the course. They found it very interesting and innovative. They told us they learned a lot uh, since they could also uh, uh, benefit from the equipment and the experience from the other universities and the other lecturers. Uh, the real-time experiment helped them understand the full process, uh, in this case uh, of the cooling process, the dynamic behavior, the energy needed uh, for the cooling process and the influence on thermal comfort. Um, the live data uh, that made it really an experience since they could see how temperatures, how um, flows, uh, air flows uh, developed. And um, there was a high density of information. So um, we had planned our courses for two times 90 minutes. Uh, they ended up to um, take longer than that. We, because we put a lot of uh, information into our courses. So that was one feedback we got from the students too, that we should limit it probably to two times 10 minutes, uh, 90 minutes as it was intended in the beginning. 
Yeah, so now uh, the outlook, and that's one reason why we're presenting this project and this course here is... To really Sorry to interrupt you for a yep. second. So actually, we're running, or the time is run up, but I can give you like two minutes. But the organizers will close down the session soon. Okay, let me, so that's 30, the last 30 minutes slide. So, exactly. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, we're looking uh, for partners that are interested in cooperation with us. Uh, that uh, we want to uh, develop now a course series with uh, seven block sessions, seven times, two times, 90 minutes. We're looking for partners. Uh, we will develop this course. We will it may make available in the greater region, these four countries that uh, Philip mentioned. Um, but we also want to invite other universities, other institutions uh, to cooperate. Uh, they can uh, have their students participate in the course, but of course, we, are, we would also like to add their equipment to our platform um, and uh, we definitely want to uh, seek uh, funding opportunities for future projects and future collaborations. So you're highly invited to express your interest in your participation. Thank you. Thank you very much for the inspiring presentation. Um, there haven't been any questions in the chat, so I think everything was clear. Um, thanks again, and we'll close the session now. I hope you enjoyed the festival. Thank you. Thank you.